Hello, everyone, and thank you for tuning in to this week's edition of the My Wim Life Show. I am super, super excited to have my friend and colleague in the real estate industry, Miss Emily Green, here to talk about all things lending and breaking her body and <laughs> all the things, all the adventures she's been through recently. Uh, so I just want to talk a little bit about uh, all of the things that she's been up to. So Emily, tell us a little bit about you. Awesome. Well, thanks so much for having me on. I am so excited. Um, so I'm Emily Green. Uh, my tagline or motto, if you will, is saving you green on your mortgage. And I'm a mortgage lender here in Boise, Idaho. My office is in downtown Boise. You can see the foothills actually behind me. Um, so I can lend in all 50 states though. So it's fun. I get to help people all around the nation um, purchase and refinance their homes. Um, so that's what I do, but that's obviously not who I am, right? I am a um, super fun loving person. I love, I just love life. I like to mix things up. I like to um, constantly evolve and change for the better and um, help other people out in the world. And um, yeah, I, uh, I've i known Wendy for, gosh, how long have we known each other now? Maybe know, four or five years? years? Sure. Yeah. yeah. Um, and I, we originally met in BNI, actually. Yes. Um, so, so yeah, that's who I am. I'm totally. happily married to the hottest husband in the world. <laughs> <laughs> um, and, uh, we live in Boise. We have uh, a little kitty cat and, um, no kiddos yet, but maybe someday. So maybe someday. Yeah. Maybe someday. Yeah. <laughs> Hopefully soon. Yes. Well, I alluded to it. And so you have to tell a little bit more about the story of you breaking yourself in the cabin, <laughs> falling down the stairs. Yes. So that was a crazy fun adventure. Um, <laughs> so last October um, is when we went up to Polly Bemis Ranch. Are you familiar with that area? I'm not. So, okay. So you go up, um, like go through McCall, through Riggins. And then you head east from Riggins until like literally the road ends and you take a jet boat up the river, another 40, 45 minutes up the river, and you get to Polyphemus Ranch, which is actually a historical site. Um, really cool story on that. Super cool history. Um, but anyway, Polyphemus Ranch is kind of like a co-op. Um, so it's owned by, I think, like 13 different families. And one of them is our neighbors and they um so in order to stay up there you have to know somebody that actually has like a sharehold there um and so anyway our neighbors invited us um you know you get to do some steelhead fishing and um just it's gorgeous oh my gosh you should absolutely if you get a chance ever to go up that way um it's in the frank church wilderness um area too so it's just beautiful um right. anyway I, uh, it was our last night there and um, they run off of solar and so they turned off the power at night to conserve energy and the top of the stairs we were staying at the um, on the top, you know, at the top of the cabin on the second story I should say um, and the bathroom entrance is about like a foot away from the top of the stairs and I woke up in the middle of the night to go to the bathroom and took like one step, like literally one and a half steps too many and just fell all the way down the stairs. And it's a log cabin. So it's like a 15 foot fall. And my husband thought that a tree had fallen on the cabin. That's how long it <laughs> I was like, nope, this is me. So yeah, and it's just me. Him, Don't worry. <laughs> it was really bad. Yeah. It took him like five minutes to wake me up. Like I was knocked unconscious. Like immediately I um, broke my right collarbone and my left thumb and um, had to get life lighted out of there. And because I was like the whole time I, you know, I, my whole body hurt, you know, you fall down the stairs, especially like hardwood stairs. Right. So I was like, I just can't take the jet boat back. I just can't do it. <laughs> I'm right. so sorry. So <laughs> life light came and got me and um, flew me to the hospital and had a couple surgeries and now I'm back in action. So I was, I was healed up by like January ish, just took yeah. a few months. Yeah, but still, that's, I mean, breaking your collarbone, like, that's one hell of a fall. Yeah, 
And it's crazy because at the bottom of the stairs, as soon as my husband like finally like woke me up, I don't remember saying this, but I told him immediately, I broke my collarbone and my thumb. I'm not crazy, Weird. but like, I don't remember saying that at all. And I right. had no idea afterward that, that that's even like, yeah, so. Crazy, crazy, crazy. <laughs> We've all had that weird stuff happen to us, though. So uh, I just I just love, you know, hearing about other people's, you know, struggles that they've been through. And you just yeah. kind of pick yourself up and you keep on moving. You know, there's not much you can do. You just have to keep going. And literally, yeah, like there wasn't much I could do for months. Like I, I, uh, I literally couldn't even get out of bed or like up off the couch without help. Right. Um, and uh, yeah, I was originally gonna not have to have surgery on my collarbone because it was like pretty lined up. Like the two bones were like just barely, barely touching. And I'm like, yeah. okay, it should heal on its own. And then, you know, three weeks, four weeks later, I went in for a post, you know, post accident follow up and my bones were like this. They like weren't oh. even touching or anything. So I had a mental breakdown for sure because I was like no because I had already had surgery on my thumb and I was like yay I'm on the mend like everything's great and then yeah no. I couldn't couldn't do anything by myself couldn't take a drink of water by myself couldn't shower alone couldn't go to the bathroom like it was it was humbling for sure yeah you realize exactly how much your body assists you on a day-to-day -day basis with even the simplest of tasks yeah and now when I'm in the shower, like actually washing my own hair, I'm like, oh, this is so great. I'm so thankful. <laughs> <laughs> you know, the little things that you never thought that you'd have to be like really grateful for. But yeah, totally. totally. You just you just learn that you can't take that stuff for granted because in a moment's notice, you can have that taken away from you. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's crazy. And, um, you know, it kind of like one of the, um, one of the things I think about often is, you know, my, how I end conversations with people, you know, friends, family, clients, colleagues, and anybody, like, I always have in my mind that like, this could be the last conversation I ever have with this person. You just never know, right? And so that's kind of one of the things that I've always kind of carried through with me through my life. But um, especially after that is like, you just never know, like life can literally be taken from you in an instant or at least drastically changed. Um, so yeah, that's a, I think that's a big thing for me is like, always, I'm always like, okay, bye. I love you. Like, I don't even care, you know, who you are. Like, I'm gonna tell you I love you because I do. Right. <laughs> you know. <laughs> I know you definitely are such a people lover of all the people. It really doesn't matter. You could have just met them and you're like, you seem like a great person to have as a best friend today. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, so I'm I guessing, get a lot of good energy from people. Oh yeah, totally. Totally. And I'm guessing that really moves you to have that that instant ability to connect with other people in your career as well. Yeah, you know, I was just talking to somebody yesterday and um, they were just telling me how, you know, they wish that their clients would, you know, reach out to them with questions. And um, it was actually a, another agent and he was saying that um, he was like, yeah, you know, I, I always want my clients to to call me with any questions, any concerns or anything. And I'm like, wow, my, my clients call me for like literally everything they're like hey I'm not really sure like what color do you think I should paint this house I'm like, I'm like I'll totally help you with all that stuff because yeah I think it's about like building trust with people initially and just being a genuine human being too you know yeah for sure I mean I think that the people like you and I we actually are genuinely interested in what color they paint the living room so it's just a natural you know progression. I have, it's so funny because I have my very first real estate clients any, that I ever sold a house to on my own and they still call me all the time. But yeah. I mean, you build those relationships um, and they're not, they're not just about the business. They're genuinely about the people. Absolutely. Absolutely. And buying a home, I mean, as you very well know, because you're really good at making it this way, but it's, it's about 
the experience and it's a really big decision even if it's like your 17th investment property like it's still a really big decision and that's why I love working with you because you're always just like you know every like the it's the whole it's the whole picture you know it's that whole experience it's not just about closing on your home right absolutely no it is about it's so much more than that so much more than than whatever that material possession is um it's definitely about the dreams that you can make there or the the memories that you're going to cultivate there the family dinners um those are the things that i think about when i walk through a house with a family or first-time home buyers you know i'm like I'm always imagining, oh, when their first baby is born, this will be a perfect little nursery. Or, you know, when they move, when they're able to have those big family dinners, we can put a table that will sit 12 people in this space. You know, so I'm thinking about, yes, this is a physical orientation, but what is this going to allow these people to do together? Yeah, I love that. Yeah, it's oh, awesome. Oh, so good. Oh, so good. <laughs> so obviously, um, being a mortgage lender, there isn't necessarily a boss that you have to report to every day. Although you do have in your in your structure, you have a little bit more um, than just a an individual business owner. But still, you're an entrepreneur in your own right. So what are some of the habits that you've put into place that keep you on track and moving forward? Yeah, that's a great question. Um, So one of the really good things that I've been doing over the last five years is having quarterly check-ins with myself. I am my own boss, right? So I like have really high expectations of myself. Um, It's a pro and it's a con. (laughs) You know, sometimes it's a flaw, but um, more often than not, I, you know, I hold myself to a really, really high standard and um you know i'm always trying to strive to do better improve my processes and things like that and that's why having those quarterly check-ins is really really helpful um but also working with a business coach i think is like so huge if you don't have somebody else yeah i'm my own boss okay cool But if you don't have somebody else to hold you accountable to the goals that you've already set for yourself and to pump you up and get you energized and keep you feeling like excited and, you know, like, you know, like like we're talking about. Yeah, that it's possible and envisioning that, you know, and keeping you like focused on the vision, you know, short term and long term goals. Um you know, and just doing doing fun new exercises, things that you wouldn't think to think about on your own. I think having a business coach is huge if you want to actually trend up, upward, yeah. you know, move forward. So, um, I mean, that's definitely as far as like habits go, um, that's just a one habit that I think every business owner should always include is having, having a business coach, ha- staying accountable. Um, but also just staying positive, you know, making sure that you're not like, yeah, you're going to make mistakes. Like it's going to get yeah. rough. Like, <laughs> <laughs> and it happens to everybody. And that's what happens when you're, when you grow and when you, you know, when, when you're learning and you have to fail to, to get better, you know, um, it's just a matter of actually taking those failures and, you know, like learning from them and figuring out, okay, well, what could we have done differently here to avoid this? What can we do next time? Um, so, yeah, I think positivity, having a business coach and doing, you know, quarterly check-ins or monthly check-ins or whatever it is that you want to do. Um, I think those are the big things for me. Yeah. Um, just knowing that, like, no matter what, you, as long as you keep going, you're going to succeed. Like, there is no, like, you can't live, you can't make fear-based decisions. Like, you have to live in that world of possibility because everything is absolutely possible. You just have to do it. Right. Yeah. I, I just really, really, really try to advocate for just action. Like it doesn't just because it's not exactly the way that you imagined it, what you're looking for in that case is perfection. And that doesn't exist. What you need to strive for is progress every single day, make some kind of progress. And some days like it's not much. 
it's yeah. just a fingertip worth of progress because <laughs> yeah. there are just those days, but totally. um, that's not, that's not every day. Um, and you know, I, there's a, um, uh, a videographer. Oh my gosh. Now I'm going to forget his name. Um, anyways, it's one of the guys that I watch on YouTube and he talks about, uh, he has a system that he uses, particularly for going to the gym, because he really, really hates working out. But he knows it's so, so important. Um, you know, not that he's trying to, you know, be a bodybuilder or anything, but he just wants to stay in a in a healthy state. Um, and he has a rule. He never goes two days without going to the gym, ever. There's there's a one-day rule. And, and the second day, you have to go because that's if you wait more than that then the progress stops so mm -hmm. i you know i love that theory of you just have to keep moving forward totally one thing that i heard a few years ago that i really adopted because i have a i have a problem with perfectionism it's like a it's a big problem for me yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um so it you know and you i'm sure you've heard this um perfect is good done is better yes for and sure. I like that's something I've worked on for so long because otherwise you can spend so much time and not really get that far, you know? Yeah. yeah. And it's so hard for people to wrap their head around that idea as well. You know, you have this, you know, this image of how it's going to come out. And if it starts to go a little sideways, then you stress about it, which is just so not necessary. And no one's even noticing, right? No. Like, no, you're the only person that actually notices that things aren't going the way that they're supposed to, or that right. you know, no one else knows. Yeah, exactly. No one sees your grand, you know, vision, and it's great. You know, maybe keep working on that in the background, but yeah, I think that's one of the things that I've that I've really. It's honestly one of the things that it has helped me become better and better and better and better is just not focusing on all those little teeny tiny details that really ultimately don't matter too much to other people. Right, right. So yeah. tell me a little bit about what in your life, be it personal or business, is non-negotiable. That kind of those, those activities that center you and keep you in a state of that positivity or moving forward. Yeah, um, non-negotiables for me are, um, well, from like a personal standpoint, um, hot yoga. I love hot yoga. And it is like one of the best things that I found a couple years ago that um, just, first of all, you just like, you sweat. Have you ever done hot yoga? Yes, yes. And uh, as a matter of fact, I have a girlfriend that just did it the other day and she's like, you have to come to hot yoga with me. And I was like, oh, I haven't done that in like five years. I totally need to go. <laughs> oh my gosh. You should come with me too. We should have yeah. a hot yoga party. Um, <laughs> so, you know, when you like, just when you're able to just like literally like sweat out, like all the stuff, like, I, you know, it's so cleansing for me. Yeah. Um, and it just, it makes me feel so good and, and just um, like revived. And I always, um, you know, I think, when you're doing when you're doing like yoga or anything like that, um, it's really easy to get um, a, you know a focused on other people in the class, right? Sure. Especially me, because I'm a people sure. person. I'm always like, oh, interesting. Like, what are you doing over there? You know. Um, <laughs> but really, what yoga is supposed to be is focusing on yourself and yeah. how you feel and how you know, every day is going to be different for different postures. You're going to be able to be, you know, you're going to be able to do and like asymmetrical, like, you know, one side of your body is going to be better than the other for certain things. And, um, I think that's really like one of the things that I love the most about it is just really being able to like be focused on me and just be like in tune with my body and my mind and how I'm feeling and, how great this is gonna make me feel afterward and how, how great I'm feeling in the moment and how, oh my gosh, like yesterday in my practice, I sucked at this and today like, oh my gosh, look at me go, you know? Um, yeah. Instead of focusing on other people and comparing myself like that, like the first like few times that I went and did it, I was like, oh man, this, you know, I'm not, it's not doing so hot here. This chick is like <laughs> crushing it, you know? <laughs> so learning to like, 
just be yourself and like focus on you, I think is really important too. Um, so that's one of the things that I love. Um, and then, you know, I think the other non-negotiable for me is just how I treat people. Um, I think, you know, if, if there's anyone in my life that is treating people poorly or, you know, not with respect and kindness and love and, you know, from like trying to find like, like a deep, deeper understanding of what, you know, some people are, you know, some people are having bad days, you know, just give them the benefit of the doubt. And um, I think if there's, you know, if there's anybody that's in my life that's, that, that doesn't act that way and that isn't kind and loving and, and tries to understand what other people are going through, like that's, that's non-negotiable for me. I'm like, nope, sorry, you're not, not allowed in this space. Yeah. Yeah. And it's, it's so funny because I, you know, I definitely, you know, follow the, follow the Dalai Lama's theory that kindness is my religion. There's not necessarily, you know, any, anything else that I worship, but I definitely focus on the opportunities to be kind because you can always, always, always find a way to be kind. That yes. doesn't mean that I always am. I'm not perfect <laughs> and I lose my temper from time to time, just like everyone else, but that's definitely, definitely a focus for sure. Yeah. And it makes you feel so good when you can brighten someone else's day, like even just with a smile or a wave, you know, to the homeless guy on the corner, like just feels good. Yeah. Love it. Absolutely. Absolutely. So what are your next steps in your career? You're obviously very successful in, you know, especially at a pretty young age. What are your ultimate goals moving forward? Ooh, this is juicy <laughs> stuff. Juicy. Okay. Um, so I just hired an assistant. Um, she's my, the first assistant that I've ever hired and she's amazing. Her name is Crystal. Um, she's been with me since, um, kind of the end of July, July 27th was her first day. And, um, it's, you know, in the mortgage world, you know, there's so much that goes into just doing one loan for somebody, just helping one family purchase a home or refinance that home to save some more money, get cash out or whatever the case may be, right? There's a lot that goes into that one loan. And a right. lot of it is, um, you know, there, and just, there's a, there's a lot of stuff that, um, I just needed some more help to be able to leverage more of my time to really give back to my clients in a bigger way by helping them dive a little bit deeper into their options. Um, you know, and just really, really keep that like super duper high level of communication. Um, so she's been amazing at helping me with all of those things that help me leverage my time better so that I can still maintain that really, really exceptional level of, of service that I give. But um, as far as like, you know, goals that, so that was, that was a big goal for me this year was, was yeah. hiring somebody. So that was awesome. That felt so good. And she's just one of the most, most amazing human beings. So I'm so grateful that I found her, but um, you know, big goals. Um, I, you know, I think the only thing that I can really think to share with you guys as far as like that doesn't have to deal with like, you know, numbers that aren't going to make any sense to anybody else. But um, right. my big like personal goal is to um, purchase uh, while well, my husband and I are are, you know, getting ready to like kind of look into like maybe adding on some more like investment properties and stuff like that. But my big ultimate goal is to purchase a beachfront home in Mexico. You're going to love this because you love Mexico. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and, um, you know, be able to have a family there that lives there in like, uh, you know, have, you know, have it be like a, you know, just a nice size home and then have like another, you know, uh, smaller home or, you know, mid-size home kind of in the back or on the side or something like that where we can have a family like actually live there, take care of the home for us and, you know, pay them a little bit to um, to take care of everything, but just be basically allow them to live there for, for free um, yeah. and, and, you know, change, change a family's life. I think we kind of already have somebody lined up because we go to Mexico often. Yeah. Um, anyway, so that's like my big, big goal. Um, oh, good. And just to have, you know, just to have like a second home in Mexico on the beach somewhere that like overlooks a beautiful area. Yeah. 
doesn't get much better than that, honey. It really doesn't. Yeah. <laughs> and I speak Spanish fluently. I don't know if you know that, but. No, um, I didn't know that. So, I don't know. I, I just feel like I should have been born in a, in a, like, Hispanic country. Like, I just, like, that whole culture just, like, is so just familiar and, like, just that's my jam. Yeah, warm and cozy feeling. Yeah, yeah. Like, yeah totally. These are my people, like. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. I know it's, I always say, I, I wish we were a Hispanic family because then it would be normal for all of my kids to still live at home with all of their kids and we could just be one multi-generational family and they're not. It is normal. For that. <laughs> Whatever. Who cares? It is normal. It's your normal. I would love it. My kids are like, um, no, mom. Oh, oh, I see. This is your goal. <laughs> yes, this is my goal. <laughs> Definitely not their goal. <laughs> oh, that's awesome. I love, I love it. All right. So if you were giving one piece of advice out to a starting entrepreneur, what would that be? You know, we kind of talked about this a little bit already, but I really, really, truly believe that it is, you know, and this, you know, people talk about this all the time, but mindset, and it really is like, it's so important. That's why people talk about it all the time. Um, do not make fear-based decisions. Yeah. Don't live in the world of what ifs, what ifs, like, what if this happens? What if that happens? Like, unless that what if is like, what if I can do this, you know, like yeah. that's a great what if, but don't live, like live in the world of possibility and don't make your decisions based out of fear because that will limit you and it will, it will ultimately be the, the worst thing that you can do. Um, I, uh, I just, it, you know, it kind of goes back into, you know, our jobs. Wendy is like, you know, when people are like, well, I'd like to buy a house, but you know, I'm not, I'm not like, everything's not totally like, but like, what if, you know, like, what if the market goes down and it's like, well, what if the market doesn't go down? And then the same house that you're looking at now is going to be in another six months, another 25, $30,000 more expensive. And your what ifs and your like fear of like actually just jumping in and doing it and creating something awesome for yourself like that is now holding you back even further and further and further. Um, and so I see examples of that, you know, and you do too, I'm sure, oh, yeah. in our line of work all the time, every day. And I'm like, if you can just, like, if you're in a place where you're able to successfully purchase a home um, or successfully start a business or whatever, like, if you can just barely make it work, like, do it. Because guess what? In a couple more years, you're going to have so many thousands of dollars in equity in that house. And you're going to be in such a better position because you're not going to be, you're not going to have wasted thousands of dollars on someone else's mortgage. And, yeah. you know, I mean, same with business, right? Like if you would have started, like think about what your future self is going to thank you for. Like, you know, wow, I'm so glad that I started that business two years ago because now look where I'm at. You know what I yeah. mean? And that's what, that's what just getting it done and kind of going back to the whole, like, perfect is good, but done is better thing. I think like it all just ties in just beautifully with, you know, starting and starting a new business, doing something for yourself, do it sooner rather than later. And it also kind of goes back to like, you never know when your last breath is going to be taken, right? Yeah. Like just do it, just do just it. Do it. Yes. And be confident because that confidence will carry you through literally anything, right? Yeah. Yeah. There's a big difference between, you know, someone coming to you and going, well, I think I might be able to help you with this, you know, depends on this rather than absolutely whatever it takes, we will find a way to make it through this. Yes. There's a very big difference in whether or not you're going to believe in that person that they can guide you to the end. And that's really what other people are looking for in a leader. They're looking for someone that is confident that no matter what obstacle that comes up, we can work through that. Yep, exactly. And if people would just have that own confidence in themselves, everyone would just be so much further along in life and happier and more successful. And, yeah. you know, because yeah, we've we've so far our track record is, is we've made it through 100 percent of the things that have been thrown at us. 100 percent. 
yeah. today. So there's nothing else that can happen that we can't make it through. That's just my my personal belief. Totally. Yeah. Throw some more at me. I'm ready. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So tell everyone the best way to reach you. So the best way to reach me is probably my cell phone. And that number is 208-713-9090. That's 9090. So pretty easy. Um, you can also reach me on Facebook. Um, I'm Emily Green. Um, you can also reach me on Instagram at Saving You Green. Um, and yeah, I, I love what I do. And I love that you invited me on to your show today. I just really appreciate and adore you so much. And thanks for just being you too, Wendy, because seriously, the world needs more Wendy. Oh, thank you. Thank you. This is yeah. definitely my passion project. Uh, it's the one thing that I just, I love, love, love learning about different people and how they view the struggles that they go through and what their habits are. Like, I just am really curious as to how different people approach different things. Um, so part of it is very selfish intended because I like to learn. Um, but the other part is, is I know so many amazing people that are doing some incredible things in this world. And rather than just having to go one on one and go, have you met so and so? Have you met so and so? This really gives me an opportunity to share you with as many people as I know as quickly as possible. Yeah, I love that. Yeah. How long have you been doing these? Oh, I started, we started filming in uh, November of last year. So it's okay. almost been a year since we started filming. The first yeah. one went out January, the first week of January. So that's what I thought. I was thinking you were coming up on the year and you've interviewed so many amazing people. I just am so honored and grateful to be chosen as one of them. So thanks. Oh, of course, of course. I absolutely adore you. And exactly. I've got one more question for you oh, before sure. we wrap up. How do you give back? Well, um, Habitat for Humanity is a big one for me. Um, I help them process their loans. So Habitat for Humanity, is they don't just give houses to people. I think that's one of the big myth conceptions, if you will. Um, sure. So in order to receive a Habitat home, um, or be chosen for a Habitat home, um, you do have to go through still kind of a loan process. So um, I've actually been trained on how to um, process their loans and, you know, review all of the documentation that goes along with, um, you know, seeing who qualifies for a home. Um, and uh, one of the things a couple of years ago now that I'd like to start back up again, now that I have some help, um, is the, um, we had an all women's build. Yes. And yeah, that was super successful. We raised close to $40,000 um, within just like a really short period of time. We had an awesome fundraiser. We had a bunch of great sponsors. Um, and that money was actually um, given to the Habitat for Humanity, um, the well, as an organization. Um, but specifically, we were also able to physically go out and help build a home. It was yeah. really cool. So that's probably my biggest passion about giving back um, is working with Habitat because it is so closely aligned with what I do already. Yeah. Um, but also I love helping out with the Boise Rescue Mission, um, doing their um, serving, uh, meal serving, especially during the holidays for the families that are less fortunate. And I think another big like misconception with um, Boise Rescue Mission is that a lot of the people that are in need of their help don't have jobs and they, you know what I mean? They're like, they're just like sucking, you know, sucking on the system and <laughs> just trying to work it to their advantage and they just yeah. are lazy. You know, that's absolutely not the case with those people either. So yeah. um, those organizations that are really helping out the less fortunate that are really, really trying hard and just need that extra hand up. That's what it, that's, that's what gets me. So yeah. I love that. I love that so much. I love your heart and that you are definitely a relationship girl because uh, that's definitely kind of the way that that uh, that I view my whole purpose in this world is really to connect people uh, to the things and the other people that need them most. 
Yeah, and you're so good at it. <laughs> All right, well, I appreciate you coming on the show. I am so glad we got a chance to chat for a little while, and I'm sure I will see you soon. Sounds good. Thanks so much. Thank you so much for tuning in to the My Wim Life Show today. If you haven't already, be sure to subscribe so you don't miss a moment of the goodness.